When I first heard about soft tissue ultrasound for aesthetics back in early 2021, I quickly tried to find information on the internet so I can teach myself how to scan the face. I didn't find a whole lot of information at that time. The reason I was so excited was because I worked as a trained sonographer at a local major hospital for close to five years prior to going into aesthetics. So I was really excited about combining ultrasound with facial aesthetics. I found that many people have taken one or two day ultrasound courses and have struggled to perform ultrasound after the course. To me, this makes sense. I trained through my ultrasound school with over 2,000 clinical hours prior to performing ultrasound studies completely independently. And it takes practice, lots of practice. I realize that so many of you have gotten along in aesthetics for many years without ultrasound. And yes, you still can. However, ultrasound is a valuable tool that can help with patient outcomes. You can learn ultrasound so you can address certain issues right away, or others around you can learn ultrasound and you can refer your patients to them. It's up to you. I'd like to offer some pointers for those looking to improve upon or sharpen their ultrasound skills. In this video, I'll go over some of the basics to get you ready for scanning. These basics are things that you need to know before even setting the probe down on anyone. Ultrasound is high energy sound waves above a sound that humans can hear. Ultrasound works by vibrating crystals inside the transducer that sends sound waves to the area of interest. It creates an image by passing through and echoing off a structure and then returning to the transducer. Diagnostic ultrasound typically ranges from two to 30 plus megahertz or higher. For facial ultrasound, 12 to 20 megahertz is common. I won't go too much into physics, but I should mention that this frequency dictates the number of sound waves that pass per second and are measured in thousands of cycles per second. The higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength, which is less penetration into the tissues. For example, a five megahertz transducer, what we'd find with like a typical curvilinear, would be great for looking at a liver deep in the abdomen, where a 20 megahertz transducer would be great at looking at superficial blood vessels in the forehead. We use grayscale when performing ultrasounds so we can differentiate what types of structures we're looking at. Grayscale is also called B mode, which is short for brightness mode. We identify structures based on how the echo is. Sound passes through the echoes off the structures different based on the tissue type. In the world of ultrasound, there are certain terms used to describe a structure. It's important to know these, not just to sound cool, but you can properly communicate or document clinical information this way. In grayscale, structures are identified as anechoic, which is black, hypoechoic, which is the dark gray, isoechoic, and that's the same echogenicity when compared to another tissue nearby, hyperechoic, that's brighter than surrounding tissue, and reflective, where you only see one side of the structure because sound is bouncing off it, and it's bright. I'll give you some examples. Liquid is typically anechoic because sound passes right through it. So simple cysts and even hyaluronic acid, dermal fillers can be anechoic. Solid structures with less fat or fibrous tissue can be hypoechoic. An example of that would be muscle when compared to fat, because fat appears brighter than muscle on the screen. The SMAS is hyperechoic compared to surrounding tissue due to the dense fibrous tissue. And bone is bright and reflective, so you only see the surface of it on ultrasound. Also, tissue can be classified as heterogeneous or homogeneous. The masseter, is a heterogeneous muscle unlike the muscles on the face that look more hypoechoic. You'll see bright echogenic dots in the masseter. The parotid gland is homogeneous, so the parenchyma looks more smooth. Gain is the mechanical ability to change the brightness on the screen. This is dependent on the tech, the operator, and whatever they are comfortable with, as long as they can properly tell if the structure is solid or cystic. Scanning occurs in the longitudinal axis or transverse axis. It can also occur coronally, but we aren't scanning any baby brains here. When we talk about longitudinal or transverse, we are talking to the specific structure. If you think about a straw, longitudinal to the straw would show the length of the straw. 
and transverse would show a donut looking image of the straw cut in half. Okay, now that we can speak a little bit of the same language, let's talk about your transducer. If you're using a handheld transducer like this one, you'll need to be paired to the screen. Then you'll need to pick a setting appropriate to what you're scanning. Obviously, you won't pick an abdomen if you're scanning a superficial vessel. You'll want the focus of the transducer to be at the typical depth of that structure. So if you're trying to scan superficially, you'll need to pick something more superficial like soft tissue or a vascular setting. Keep in mind when preparing to scan, there's a little notch at the top of the ultrasound. There's one on this side, there's one on this side. This notch should be up or towards the patient's right, depending on how the structure lies. I have seen on social media where providers are scanning with the transducer upside down. And it's not the end of the world, but it sure would be hard to scan that way. Now, if you have your ultrasound set up, your gel, and a drape to keep the gel from getting all over your patient's clothes, then you're ready to start scanning. If you found this information helpful, please like and subscribe. Let me know if there's anything that you want me to talk more about. Thanks.